my ugly face. I'll turn the camera around, guys. Here we go. Appreciate everyone joining today, guys. I apologise. I did try and do a live video before, but one of my mates from Wagen, Al, turned up. I got a tour of my yard. So, uh, um, what we're going to do today, guys, is empty these rainwater tanks full of the soil. And we're going to put all the soil on this tarp here. And one of these um, rainwater tanks is going to go into my backyard for a bobtail, a baby bobtail habitat full of logs and rocks and nice fresh sand. And it's all going to be covered in chicken wire just so I can protect the bobtails from being taken by predators, stepped on, etc. until they um, grow bigger. I have got them in a little uh, rainwater tank at the moment, guys, like about this size. But I'm going to create a nice big one like this so these are old rainwater tanks like like that one there that plastic one there so what we're going to do today guys is pretty simple we're just emptying these rainwater tanks full of the soil that's all we're doing today and eventually in the next couple of weeks hopefully in the next week or so we're going to create a beautiful native uh, frog and tadpole habitat where these rainwater tanks are sitting right now this one here and that one there we're going to create a beautiful rockery full of all nice built up soil, native grasses, shrubs, all, everything's going to be all native local species, Melileuca trees, etc. possibly. Um, this is a paper bark tree, beautiful white paper bark tree that one is. Um, Melileucas, shrubs, native grasses, etc. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing today, guys. It's five o'clock in the evening. So it's going to get very dark soon. So I've just got to watch Sophie, guys. There's a dog hanging around my yard, and uh, so I don't want Sophie to get pregnant because it's it's a beautiful kelpie, another kelpie, but it's a uh, a uh, red cloud kelpie, whereas Sophie's a black and tan uh, kelpie. Oh, well, I do would love to get a pups out of it, guys, but um, I don't know where the dogs come from. And also, I want it to be bred with a proper black and tan kelpie, not a red cloud kelpie. But anyway, guys, so this is what I've been doing the last couple of days, working on this retaining wall. It's looking beautiful at the moment, guys. I think I'm pretty well happy with the way it looks at the moment. Um, so, it's getting there. All right, guys. And this is what I've finished. Um, in the last few days, this one here, this little section right here, what we've done the last couple of days. And I found a beautiful rock, guys. So this is a, my little cornerstone rock here. And it's shaped like the map of Western Australia. So it's shaped like the map of Western Australia. And Dombey Young's about here. Right there, where my finger is. But I'm still working on it, guys and girls. So we've got to cover this area here in nice rocks all the way up to that white paper bark trunk there. And this is that little tiny. This is what the white paper bark tree looks like, guys. Beautiful paper bark. Sophie! All right, and I'll quickly show you this big uh, plastic insert. What we're going to use for the pond. And this is a paper bark tree here, guys. Beautiful paper bark, so the bark's like paper. And all insects and all that live underneath it. The Noongar people would use it for bush tucker. You can cook fish in this, wrap fish in it, and cook over a fire or steam it in the paper bark. Many, many uses the Noongar people would use this, and the bark's really, really soft. So there's like a thousand different layers of bark on this and compress it really really soft nor insects and everything else live underneath the paper bark it's a beautiful tree guys it'll live for hundreds of years so we've got three of them here and this a couple more over this side and this is all my scrap metal Batteries, cans, radiators. And this is where I keep all my main scrap, guys. Copper, brass, copper tubing, 
electrical motors, uh, copper and brass will I need to take apart, copper tubing, drusian aluminium, all my good scrap, pots and pans and everything guys, it's a lot here. So I did all this to survive, to pay off my bills guys, to pay off a big debt. I did mention this in my last video, but I thought I'd show you again. While I'm in here, I'm embarrassed about it guys, but I'm also very proud of it. Because this is what I did to survive guys, to uh, pay off my debts. And all of this scrap metal you can see here has been saved from being buried in landfill. You know, it's all been saved from being buried in landfill guys. So imagine the boats. All of this aluminium could, could build probably around 20 or 30 boats, I reckon. You know, like dinghies, tinnies. There's a few blokes in my town I love their fishing. So, I, there's quite a few blokes in my town with tinnies. I used to have a tinny, guys. I like to sell it to pay out my debts. But anyway... Anyway, fellas, this is my plastic insert, what I found out the wage and rubbish dump. We're going to turn this into a beautiful pond out the front of my yard. Electrical cord, but... So, the link to the video is in the description box for this one, guys, where I found it. Another thing what God has given me, provided me, guys. And a couple of old childhood memories, guys. BMX bikes. That one's not an old one. But that one's an old one, that one. I used to have a beautiful old BMX when I was a kid. It's just a Kmart special, guys. It was called the Red Devil. And my mate Darren had a BMX called the Yellow Devil. We are both pretty good BMX riders. So... So that's it guys, hoarding and also scrapping to survive. There's a lot of brass in here too fellas, heaps. So anyway, guys and girls, Sophie! Good girl. Always worried about my dogs guys. And these are just radiators, what, uh, most of them are taken apart, there's a few there what need to be taken apart, they're really really easy to take apart. Guys just use monkey grips, and you just bend these back, and the plastic will come straight off. But yeah, there's some nice aluminium ones here, and uh, copper and brass radiators down the bottom. I've also got about probably over 100 tonnes of iron, one or two, maybe even... 200 tonnes of iron stored at a mate's farm and I'll be getting rid of that shortly as well and these are chairs but I basically think I'm going to give up scrapping guys so I've had enough of it my auntie just kicked the bucket she's left me a bit of an inheritance guys million dollars pretty good eh so. Me and my sister going halves, million dollars, 500 grand each. What do you think about that? That'll pay off a few debts, won't it? She had no kids, guys. Me and my sister were like her only kids. But anyway, here's a couple of gates here, fellas. So they're going to go, one of these beautiful gates here is going to go where that gate is at the bottom, where Sophie is. This one. I'm also going to do a video on how to straighten up a gate like this using a sledgehammer so stay tuned for that video guys we're going to straighten this old gate up using a sledgehammer I rescued this from the top of a scrap metal pole in wage and this one's in pretty good condition beautiful old federation style gates and I'll show you a beautiful gate right over here guys and then we'll start doing this so all of these rocks are going to be used for my little front yard frog and tadpole pond. Not all of them. Some of them are going to be used for my retaining wall. Some will probably go at the back. 
and all of these rocks have been rescued from rubbish dumps, guys and girls. But anyway, this is a beautiful gate here, a really old, probably a hundred year old gate right there and that's going to go where my truck is very very shortly so really really heavy it is and also this one here so we're going to create a beautiful gate going across right here where my truck is right now so I'll be doing a video on that very shortly too guys digging the actual hole the only thing I'm worried about is when I dig the hole will I hit the uh, telephone line what goes underneath the ground right here this is a telephone line guys so I haven't got a clue where it is but that arrow is pointing there but I have to dig the hole right next to this wall so the last thing I want to do is dig into this rock hard concrete like gravel and then bloody break the telephone line because uh it's somewhere next to this fence, guys, and the hole's got to be pretty deep to support this huge, heavy gate. So, but yeah, I'm just trying to get my house tidied up, guys, for my family. Got a bit of a family reunion coming up soon. Special occasion, you know. Want to look, get my house looking beautiful for my family. I haven't been over here for years. It's getting there, guys. That's why I keep myself busy every day. Even though I struggle, I just have to do stuff every day to keep my mind occupied. I don't struggle that bad, guys. It's not as bad as what I used to. Anyway, we're sitting up my camera now. So all you're going to see me to do today is just basically empty up these uh, these uh, rainwater tanks, guys and girls. So. It's nothing, not going to be nothing special, but in the next few days, tomorrow, I'm heading out to Dale to get a big trailer load of nice loam soil. And then we're going to slowly build up and make a beautiful garden here full of natives and a beautiful pond. So the pond's going to be the centrepiece of my yard, of my front yard. So I haven't got too long. It gets dark probably in the next hour or so. <clears throat> and also guys I've got some little concrete sheep troughs full of tadpoles western and bleating toadlets in there native grasses there's another one here what's got a leak in it what needs to be fixed it's got got a little crack in the in the uh, concrete trough that'll be easy to fix a couple of areas here for birds to drink out of some uh these have just got concrete in the bottom with sealed properly with proper uh, concrete sealant. Um, you can buy that in hardware stores so to make the uh, actual pot because the pot's got a hole in the bottle, bottom, a drainage hole. So I've just made it basically waterproof and it's full of beautiful native water grasses. And that little sign there is just me poking fun at the shore of Dumbuyong. There's my got a bit of a sarcastic sense of humor guys and this is another one another little sheep trough made out of a made into a little frog and tadpole pond and another little bird feeding area and these beautiful Mali lucas here are going to create a beautiful like a uh, hedge for my backyard my front yard eventually for privacy so it's getting there guys compared to what it used to look like about 10 years ago when the whole front yard was covered in junk when I lost my business I had nowhere to store all the crap so I just had to store it in my front yard it was horrible fellas people would drive past just to look at my house and this one right here guys is a beautiful typha grass so uh, you're going to eat this like a corn on the cob and when the seeds uh, float away it's like cotton wool the seeds and these seeds will float for hundreds of kilometres and land in wetland areas and germinate into nice new grasses and the bottom of the grass is a white root like uh, 
uh, the Noongar people would use it for bush tucker. It tastes like potato, very, very starchy, high in starch and fibre. So anyway guys, let's get started. Alright, so you're not going to see much, it's me emptying this, um, these rainwater tanks. It'll take about probably 45 minutes, half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Here are the beautiful ravens or crows singing in the background. Should have put my gloves on guys, this is like razor sharp. All of this beautiful soil, guys and girls, will be used for the actual garden bed as well. And also guys and girls just let you know this one here what I'm emptying right now the copper rainwater or the water pipe runs directly underneath this so I need to get rid of it because if I get a leak it's going to be really really frustrating so that's definitely needs to go
soil, the soil smells beautiful, guys and girls. I'm going to move this one now. And this one here, guys, I'm going to make into a beautiful bobtail habitat for my baby bobtails. If not this one, that one there. If you're wondering what those things are guys on the green shade cloth or the red pink shade cloth they're uh, food safe IBC containers and I'm going to be using those for aquaponics so 
So eventually aquaponics. Good exercise. You know what that is, guys and girls? Some of you, if you're a metal detectorist, you'll know exactly what it is. I found hundreds of these before metal detecting lab. It's an old harmonica, often old harmonica, guys, harmonica reed, or something like that. So it's amazing what you can find in soil. It's an old harmonica reed, made out of uh, brass or copper. Go in my garden. Crow or raven. And that bird just sent us a 28 parrot or a Port Lincoln parrot. That one sounds like a bell. We call it 28 parrot, guys. I used to eat them when I was a kid. We used to get them with our Shanghai's and cook them over hot coals. Beautiful 28 parrots. Me and my mate Simo used to do it. We pluck, kill them, pluck them, wrap them up in alcohol, put a little bit of butter inside their stomach and put them on a beautiful campfire, guys. And they tasted absolutely delicious. We'd also do the same thing with pink and grey galahs, the cockies. Cook them over a fire. Shoot them with our Shanghai's, like that, bang.
We don't call them Shanghai's, guys, where I come from. We call them Gings. G-I-N-G-S. A Ging. It could be even an Aboriginal word, a Noongar word, I'm not too sure. Should be able to lift this now, hopefully. Yep. And this one, this will be going out to my mate Dahl's farm, guys. I've got a little special storage area where I can keep stuff in a patch of bush. So. I'll save this one out Dale's farm for a rainy day for growing vegetables or something like that. These ones here are the perfect size, fellas, for growing vegetables, potatoes. Uh, you don't come across too many of these, but those two there and this, they're all rubbish dump finds, guys. They're old rainwater tanks. So good exercise guys, as I always say I'm pretty fit for a 52 year old compared to some of the other blokes around this town I see guys, big beer guts, good luck drinking, that's what I say guys, give up the drinking alcohol, it's more or less like just drinking flavoured methylated spirits, rots all your insides out guys. You're drinking poison if you drink alcohol. So I haven't had a drink now for 15 years as of last month. So I wasn't really, I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic guys, but I was close, but I was a binge drinking alcoholic. You know, once I started, I couldn't stop. You know, I'd start off having the old nice King Brown beer bottles. Then after the King Browns had been finished, 
and I'd start off on the uh, Scotch or the Bundaberg rum or uh, yeah, usually the Scotch or the Bundy, the Bundaberg rum. And this is a King Brown beer bottle here guys. A beautiful old King Brown beer bottle I found out the old Dumble Young rubbish dump I think. And then I drink the King Browns, I drink probably three to six of these every night. I love the uh, stout, the black ale, the Cooper's stout. I used to love drinking that. Then after I drank that, I'd start off on the spirits, like this, the whiskey. I'd start drinking the whiskey or the Bundaberg rum. Then after that, I'd start drinking the, the, the port, the port, I've got no port here. It could be one over here. The old bottle of port, something like this. This isn't a port bottle, guys. This is an old whiskey bottle. Beautiful old whiskey bottle. But what you're doing really, guys, is drinking poison. You're drinking this stuff. This is what you're drinking, guys, when you're drinking alcohol. Poison. It's going to kill you, guys. It's okay to drink when you're young. Look at my documentary on the very front of my page called Chasing the Dragon. All those poor people have been, their lives been destroyed by alcohol. So that's what I was, guys, a binge drinker. But I was close. There were times where I'd, you know, have a few swigs of whiskey in the morning. But it didn't get to that bad, you know, where you're literally drinking it every day. But uh, thank God I gave it up, guys. I went to Hollywood, a uh, private clinic for a hospital for veterans and also for civilians and you're not going to believe who I saw there guys when I was there you know who do you reckon I saw this bloke won't even have a clue about my YouTube channel but anyway I saw my commanding officer in the same same uh, Hollywood private hospital guys commanding officer I won't say what forces it was either Air Force, Army or Navy. I was in the Navy at the time, but uh, it was a mixed organisation. And this commanding officer, or maybe the uh, second in charge, was there, and he'd slipped both of his wrists, guys. You know, he'd slipped both of his wrists. All his wrists were covered in uh, bandages. I couldn't believe it when I saw him. You know, it just goes to show anyone can try and kill themselves. And this was a high-ranking officer in the Australian Defence Force. So, yeah, it really, really shocked me when I saw him there. Uh, but anyway, guys, so that's why I gave up. You know, I wasn't, I, I actually volunteered to go there, you know, so I needed to give up the alcohol. And from the moment I went in there, from probably around March 2008, the very first day I went in there, I'd never touch alcohol again, guys. And I haven't had a drink ever since. But there were times throughout the last 10 years where I drank a beer called Birrell, B-I-R-R-E-L. It was like a non-alcoholic beer, or even a Cooper's uh, so-called non-alcoholic beer, but it had like 0.2% alcohol in it. But I threw it away, guys. But I still say I'm 15 years sober. It's the best thing I ever did, giving up the alcohol. Because it's poison, guys. You don't realise. Look at these people on my that Chasing the Dragon playlist. You know, young... There's a young girl there in one of the videos. She's 26 years of age and she's got chronic liver failure. And uh, weeks after the video was made, she, she dies from alcohol-induced cirrhosis of the liver. So there's no future in drinking, guys. It's going to catch up with you one day. It's all right when you're young, but it gets to the stage where it's beyond uh, help. You know, you get to the stage where it's just too late. So try and give it up, guys, if you can, because it's going to kill you. And uh, and one thing about drinking alcohol, guys, being a drunk, I know you hate me saying it, but drunks aren't allowed in heaven. God will not permit any drug uh, drunks or alcoholics or even drug addicts. So just thought I'd share that little story, fellas, guys and girls. But anyway, this is a beautiful soil. All of this soil used to be covered in beautiful shredded paper, guys. It's just amazing how it just disappears. And, uh, yeah, it's all been turned into a beautiful, rich, healthy soil. And it smells absolutely beautiful. 
And there's also a little horse mule there too. But I'll keep going now guys, I'll finish this off tomorrow. And this is the next one, what I'm going to be doing. I've got to get rid of this tank as well. So basically, where the uh, uh, pond's going to be is right here in the middle here. So I've got to get rid of all of this. That's where my that tree there to the right of the kangaroo. That stump there is where my that tree stump in the middle of the screen. That's about roughly where my copper pipe runs to my main house. So I can't have any soil or trees or native grasses or the pond sitting on top of that copper pipe because otherwise I'll I'll get a leak in my pipe. So the pipe runs directly to this tap right here. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of string and tie the string from where the the other tap is and work out exactly where this pipe is. Because last year, guys, or a couple of years ago, I did have a leak here and I had to dig up all the soil. The pipe's about probably three or four foot underneath the ground. And the last thing you want is to get a a leak in your pipe and it, it and it's going to happen eventually guys the pipe's 40 years old so so the uh i'm building up the i'm making the garden bed basically from here roughly from here and it's going to be all the way over here underneath this tree and it's going to be a beautiful uh enclose that big plastic insert there for the pond and it's all going to be camouflaged with these rocks over there, those beautiful flat rocks. And it's just going to look like a natural frog and tadpole habitat, guys. I don't have fish. I hate fish. I won't even have, even have native fish. There's no native fish in my area anymore. They've all been wiped out, guys. But all I want is frogs, tadpoles and frogs. There's nothing better when you're laying in bed at night and you hear the sound of beautiful frogs croaking outside your bedroom window. Anyway, guys, I might grab a strawberry, eh, for my little pet bobtail, my deformed bobtail lizard. So I appreciate you watching, guys. Thank you so much. I've got a world record people watching me right now. Three people. Wow. No, I really appreciate it. I don't care if no one watches, guys. It's uh, just great to do a uh, video so I can look back on this maybe 20 or 30 years time and just see what my house used to look like. Not just that guys, for my family also, my nephews and my niece and all my cousins, my beautiful cousins and relatives. Alright guys, it's probably nearly 6 o'clock now so I'll wrap the video up and uh, we'll probably see you tomorrow. Got something special happening in the next couple of days, guys, in regards to my beautiful little dog, Georgie, what died in my arms. So we're going to be bringing Georgie back home very shortly, okay? All right, then. Well, you have a nice night with you, guys. You hear the magpies singing as the sun goes down. Come on, Sophie. Here she comes. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Kiss. Sit. Up. Good girl. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'm going to continue going with this and remove all this soil. So, and uh, we'll see you probably tomorrow, guys. Have a nice night with you on the world. I appreciate all your beautiful comments, guys, and I love you all. All right, especially my good subscribers, my old subscribers. You all know who you are. The ones who have been with me for nearly 10 years. So DJ and all those people like that. Does, Nichols, Les, and uh, many others who probably watch but don't even comment. Thanks, guys. We'll chat soon. And uh, there's no moon in the sky at the moment. Otherwise, I would have zoomed up to the moon. See you guys.